I was lost. Broken, addicted. In chains, I put myself in. Bound in sin defeated and hopeless. But God wouldn't leave me there. When I was in my darkest place, He reached out. In His infinite love and mercy, He broke off the chains. And picked me up so I can live in freedom. Every single day. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Man, I just think that's just awesome, man, at what God's done in all these people's lives. And I'm excited today, um, this new sermon series, I want to make sure I explain it to you. This is my testimony. Uh, God spoke it to me several months ago. I was uh, actually listening to that song, I believe Elevation sings it, This Is My Testimony. And uh, I was sitting there just thinking about it, going down the road, and then uh, I was just reminded of when I was a kid. I don't know if you grew up in a church like this, but we always had that old lady in the church that said, Pastor, can I give my testimony? How many has ever been in that church before? You're right. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Some of them might have been your grandmama, <laughs> okay? Uh, and then I just realized that when they said that, I thought to myself, oh my God, church is going another hour. That's what I thought. <laughs> and, uh, but seriously, I thought to myself, you know, man, there's a lot of people in here who have incredible incredible testimonies of where God just literally snatched you up out of the darkness and brought you to the light. And I said, you know what, man, somebody's going through something and they need to hear that testimony. And I said, man, we've got to do this. So this is what this, this sermon series is about. Each week, I'm going to come up here or maybe it may not be me. Maybe we have another one of our pastors speak, but we're going to come up here and we're going to have a topic. And we're going to talk about that topic for just a few minutes. And then somebody from the congregation is going to come up and they're going to give a testimony about how God revealed this to them. And today, what I want to talk to you about, and we got somebody going to come up and they're going to give their testimony about this. But I want to talk to you about the masterpiece. The masterpiece. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 it says a very powerful verse. Some of you may have heard it, but here's what it says. It says, for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Webster, I looked it up in the Webster's Dictionary. Here's what Webster says, the definition of masterpiece is. It says it's a work of outstanding artistry and skill. It is the craftsman's greatest work. That is the masterpiece. We are his greatest work. And I was thinking about that. I was like, wow, God, I'm your greatest work. You know, there's been many times in my life where I didn't feel like I was a masterpiece. Um, maybe you're out here today and you've got that secret sin that you don't want nobody to know about. Maybe you're addicted to pornography. Maybe you have an addiction of some sort or whatever and you don't want nobody to know about it. And every time you fall victim to it, you don't feel like a masterpiece. Maybe when you look in the mirror, you don't see what this world says you should look like. And you look at yourself and all you see is imperfections. And you may not feel like you're a masterpiece. Maybe you've been betrayed. You've tried to trust in somebody. Maybe it's a relationship of some sort. And, you know, you tried to trust them and they betrayed you. And you felt rejected. And you didn't feel like a masterpiece. You didn't feel worthy. How can anybody love me? I keep messing this up. Or maybe when you see that person, 
and you walk up to him, you see him coming, and you put on the fake smile. And you go, hey, brother, how's it going? Glad to see you today. And deep down inside, you hate their guts. And if they really knew how you thought, how can that be a masterpiece? And bitterness set inside you. And you get envious about how somebody gets. Let me tell you something, man. I'm guilty of that. The enemy used to run rampant with me about that. In my younger days in ministry, I would work so hard man to try to do God's will man and be the best and then you'd see somebody you see this in the world too you see this on the job somebody come in and they ain't doing anything and then they just get promoted and you're like man I've worked so hard man I've gave my best to this this person don't even show up on time all blah 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 and they get promoted and then when you see them you all go hey brother how's it going deep down inside you just full of envy and jealousy inside and you fake it how can somebody that thinks like that be a masterpiece? I'm glad you asked me because I'm about to tell you. It's because God is good. And it's because nowhere do I ever see the creation get to label what they are. Period. I never seen a trash can walk up to me and say, hey, I'm going to be a palm tree today. No, it's a trash can because that's what I made it to be. And here's what I want you to know. God made everybody in this room. And when he made you, he made you good. In fact, that's exactly what he said, Miss Carol. That when he was taking time and molding you and making your personality and making how you love people, and when he got done with it, he said, mm, that is good. This is what God done with every one of us. So many times, though, we want to get involved in the process and say, well, I've got this imperfection in my life. Well, I can't be this. Well, we don't get that choice. This world doesn't get to choose what we will be but we try so hard to let it. But the reality is, Jeremy, when God made you, he made you good. And you're his masterpiece. Amen? So here's what I want to do. I'm going to bring a young man up. This young man, you're going to get to hear, tried to be good according to the world's standards. He tried what the world had to offer him. And he found himself at a crossroads. And thank God, he chose the Lord. Some of you may have heard me talk about him a few weeks ago. He gave his life to the Lord. He's here, man. His family's here. This is, this is a product of prayer. This is a product of God's love and mercy. If you can, man, can you welcome Mr. Tony Braganza to the stage for me? Yeah. <laughs> All right, Tony. We're just going to talk for a second. Here's what I want you to do. I'm just, me and Tony, we, you know, I, uh, we, we had lunch this week. Yeah, go ahead and get them thing for your mama. She's going to be crying, Tony. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we met this week and went on then Chick-fil-A and got us one of them burritos, right? That's right. Until we got bitten that burrito. Tony's like, oh, yeah, it's got the uh, potatoes and everything in it. I like that, yeah. Tell you what, I'm grateful for them, praise God. <laughs> um, but we got to talking, man, and uh, I've known Tony, man. What was you, about 12? How old were you? 12 years old, I met this young man. And uh, we went to church together. And I'd come by, pick this dude up, man. We'd go set the church up. And uh, we'd have to go set the church up on a Saturday night. And uh, we met in a, a YMCA. And then afterwards, the perks of that was we got to play basketball together, right? And uh, then we got paintball was real big. So we got involved in paintball. And we started playing paintball together. Secretly, I just went and got Tony so I could shoot him. 
Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, but uh, Tony, man, we spent a lot of time together, and uh, Tony moved to Las Vegas, and uh, I just you just lose contact with people, and. Uh, you know, you'd hear things through the grapevine, like, you know, you know, what well, Tony's this or Tony's that or, or, or whatever. We just lost a lot of contact. And, uh, man, the enemy tried to destroy Tony while he was gone. And uh, what I want to do is, is uh, I want him to share with you. He doesn't have a five-point laid out, uh, put together message of, bam, this is my testimony. You're going to get it raw today. Okay, you, 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 you're not going to get a glorified sermon. You're going you're gonna to get a, hey, we're in the moment. We're going to let the Holy Spirit lead. You know, that's what we're going to do. And we're going to do that because this is what we all should be doing. We should let the Holy Spirit lead in every way in our life. And sometimes we ain't going to have the answers. We just got to trust him. Amen. So, Tony, here's what I want you to do. I want you to tell these people what you experienced when you were in Las Vegas. Tell us how you decided to choose the world. Well, uh, I got married in 2012 in Las Vegas and I was living out there, but gambling uh, really took a toll on me. That, that played a big part, but then uh, there's temptations on every corner out there in Las Vegas, it's Sin City, you know, but um, gambling and I picked up drugs and uh, they just disconnected me from God. and. Um, Last year, 2019, I'm going into 2020 homeless and showering out of water hose and just, I felt hopeless. And um, God made a way to part the waters and take me back to Alabama and go to rehab. It really helped me. And I got out of rehab and then uh, disconnected from God again and got back to my old ways and it was even worse. And then uh, I accepted Jesus in my life November 11th, 2020, but then um, I went back to my old ways just, you know, one final time, but that day he delivered me was December 16th, and that's the last time I used or gambled or anything, and let me tell you, Jesus does deliver. He is not DiGiorno. He, he really does deliver. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, there's some important things I want to pull out. Okay, I just want everybody to fully understand the, 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 the significance of this. Where's your wife at, Tony? She's in Las Vegas. All right, you have a son, right? I do, six-year-old Julio. Yep. And, uh, you know, is, is it, is it is fair to say that your bad decisions have temporarily separated you? Most right? definitely, yeah. Right, so you don't get to see your son every day, do you? I don't. Yeah. And, uh, but here, what's the good news? The good news is what? I want, here's what I want you to hear. Okay, I think this is important because his wife wouldn't have anything to do with him because she just been burnt too many times, right? You keep coming back to her saying I'm going to change, and finally she had to say, well, I can't, I can't do this. Yeah. She but kept you, telling me, uh, "You said that before. You said that before." So I come up with something different to say. But then next time, you said that before. But. Tell me, tell these people what you told me in the car about the last time you talked with her, how she talked about you being different. Yes, we uh, had a great conversation, probably on the phone for 30 minutes, and she had to get used to a new person talking to her. She didn't expect any of the words that I said or any of that, and we just had a great conversation that we both were thankful that we had. That's right. So here's what I, I love about what he told me that he said that she told him that she goes, I don't know this person. And when he said that, man, I said, praise God. Here's why, because that's the Holy Spirit being revealed from his word. He says, what in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Tony? Says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone and new has come. That's right. So you're a new person. That's right. So let's talk about the crossroad. I want you to just kind of just, you know, dive in a little bit and tell these people the day that you felt like you were at the crossroads and how you, you, you literally told me that you the whole uh, video where we see of the angel and the demon on your shoulders and stuff like that. Tell them about that situation you had. So I had symptoms of COVID, but it wasn't COVID, it was me using. And um, I found myself with a glass bowl in my hand to use and a Bible, a Bible in my other hand. And it was life or death. And I had the choice then and there, which one? And 
I threw that glass bowl, broke it against the wall, and I heard something, the battle's not over. I had a big bag and, uh, of drugs, and I saw water. First thing I do, I poured the water on the drugs and got rid of it, and uh, I just ran to the Lord. Amen. That's right. Uh, you called me the other day, and, and you was at work. What'd you say? Tell him what you told me. I had a dream, and no, I wasn't sleeping at the job, but uh, yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was a daydream, and uh, I was just reflecting on my events of the past that brought me to where I am today, and um, it was me in a grave on my back, helpless, and dirt's being thrown on me, and then, um, you know, I'm full I'm covered. It starts raining, it's mud, and then I just, in my mind, I'm like, Jesus, you know, he's in me. I know Jesus got his hand out, and I mustered all the strength I could and ducked my hand through the mud and Jesus pulled me out that grave and then um, I saw who was throwing the dirt on me and it, it looked like me he was myself and then I socked him and I, yeah. I didn't hit him with a jab or nothing it was a Mike Tyson lethal right hook and, and that was it yeah when, when he told me that man we was on the phone man and uh, I got off the phone with him and I said man that was so powerful what he said and that was he was throwing dirt on himself. How many times do we do that in life? We're, we're, we're literally throwing dirt on ourselves. But what did God do in that moment, Tony? He snatched you out. He did. He sure did. Great. Is there anything else you'd like to tell these people? Uh, I'll just say, if you ever find yourself in a dark place, just know you're not alone. And Jesus is like, they're always with you always. He's Emmanuel. That's right. Um, just you know, Jesus is a gift, and don't waste time on opening it. You know, you don't want God to ask you, hey, how was the gift? And, oh, I don't know. I didn't open it yet. You know, open that gift and accept him in your life. Amen. 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 Tony, I love you, man. I love you, too, man. I'm proud of you. Thank you. I really am, man. I'm Thank honored you. to be here with you. Me, too. Yep. Here's what I ask you to do. I ask you to receive what this young man has told you today. Somebody got something out of this. I want to ask you a question, Tony. Are you God's masterpiece? I am. Amen. Amen. Give. Stand to your feet. Let's give this young man a hand clap. Yep. We are his masterpiece. We are his masterpiece. You know, many times when we read the Bible, we try to pull that out. And, and we try to make it just about us. But it's important that he said we, not I. I want you all to know we're his masterpiece. I want to let you watch a video real quick. Um, some of you have seen this video. Um, some of you have probably seen it a few times, but this will be some of your first time. And it's a very powerful story. And I just ask you to open your heart to it and receive from this. Okay? Watch this video. Ephesians 2.10 says that we are God's workmanship, His masterpiece. I don't know about you, but when I get up in the morning and look in the mirror, I don't really see a, a masterpiece, you know? I mean... Maybe a Picasso, it's like, <laughs> but I want to be his masterpiece. I want to be everything he created me to be. And so I go to him in prayer and I say, dear heavenly father, do whatever it takes to mold me into the image of your son. Make me your masterpiece. In Jesus name I pray, amen. Hi. Whoa, who are you? I'm God. You said the prayer, so here I am. You're not God. No, I am. You said the prayer. That's how it works. Okay, okay. If you're God, then uh, make it snow in here. You know what? I really don't want to make it snow in here because it'd get kind of yucky. Yeah, you're not God. Why do you say that? God wouldn't say yucky. I do. It's a Greek word. Oh. Okay, okay. Um, if you're God, what does Lamentations 15.9 say? Lamentations is only five chapters. It's a very short book. Oh. Why was it so short? I was tired of lamenting. Oh. Okay, okay, if you're God, who's gonna win the World Series this year? I'm really not into playing games. Why are you so much into playing games? You are God. Well, gave it away. You answered my question with a question. I did? <sighs> yeah, I do that. 
don't I? I did it again. <laughs> Step right up, here we go. Okay. All right. Hey, what are we doing? I'm gonna make you my original masterpiece. This is the process. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah. Wait, wait, what are these about? These are the tools I'm gonna use to make you into my original masterpiece. Okay. Yeah. Hang on. Yeah. I thought you were a carpenter. That's my son. Step right up, here we go. Okay. Oh, hey, God. Mm -hmm. How do you know what to chisel away and what to leave? I take out everything in your life that doesn't belong there, kind of like dead weight. Ooh, speaking of dead weight, could you chisel right here? It showed up when I was in my 20s and grew around and became back fat. I don't even know why you created that, but I can't get rid of it. I mean, I've tried everything. Like, I tried running, I tried lifting weights. My wife actually talked me into trying Pilates. That was awkward, but I can't get rid of it. So if you would just chisel around here, and then, you know what, if you chisel a line right here and maybe four to five, maybe eight lines right here. That would be awesome. You're funny. You made me that way. I also made the platypus. With the platypus? All I'm saying is most of my children, when it comes to this process, they just want to talk, but they don't want to do the work. So do you want to talk or can I chisel? Talk, chisel, No, talk, no, chisel. no, 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 no. I choose to chisel. All right. Through my Holy Spirit, I'm going to bring up things in your life that I want you to work on. Okay. Like your anger. I created the emotion, but you use it in the wrong way. Um, you compare yourself to others instead of me. You tell little white lies because you want to people please. You're lazy. But you try to fool everybody by looking really, really busy. You have a problem with lust. Well, time out. <laughs> I don't really have a problem with lust. You don't have a problem with lust. No, I can do it anytime I want. <sighs> Hang on a second. I mean, I, I gotta admit, I, I feel like you've been doing some great work and I'm looking pretty good right now. All right, when you look in the mirror, who do you see? I see me. Okay, then I need to keep chiseling away because ultimately you and other people need to see my son. Okay, don't misunderstand me. It's just um, when I look more like Jesus, people get uncomfortable around me. I mean, even my church friends, and they're like, oh, you're holier than thou, you know? And, and I, don't, I don't think I'm supposed to make people uncomfortable. So what you're saying is you'd rather play God in certain areas of your life than for me to be God over your whole life. That is not what I said. It's what you meant. Yes, it is. Um, it's hard to talk to you. You know everything that I'm thinking. I'm just saying you've done some great work. Maybe we take a break, a sabbatical from each other, you know. I'll stay right here and then, you That's know. That's just it, you never just stay right there. You're either moving toward me or away from me, but never you just stay. What you're doing is called control. Do you want to control things or life or can I chisel? Control, chisel, control, no, chisel. No, chisel, chisel. All right. But can we chisel where I want? That's called control. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Now this right here, this secret sin that you keep running to whenever you're hurting, angry, lonely, tired, that you think you're fooling everybody, but it's making you a whitewashed tomb. Are you ready for me to chisel this out of your life? Yeah. You see, it's a process. It's not a sprint, it's a marathon. It's your whole life. And you care so deeply about what other people think of you. It's rubbish, it's garbage. The greatest thing you're ever gonna hear is at the end of your life when you hear me say, well done, good and faithful servant. That's what you keep your eye on. That's the prize, heavenward. <coughs> oh, that hurts. Oh, trust me, this hurts me more than it hurts you. Right. <coughs> okay, I'm sorry. I just, I don't think you understand this pain. Pardon me? You're asking me to sacrifice a lot, God. Don't talk to me about sacrifice. I know all about sacrifice. I sent my son to die on the cross for pain, for sin, but I also did it for another reason, to give you freedom. Do you know what insanity is? Insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting different results. And there are things that you've been doing for years, these empty wells that don't have anything to offer. You've been going to them and it's insane. Allow me to chisel them out of your life. Um, allow me to produce character where you keep focusing so much on your image. Okay, but I was thinking. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. Okay, but if we went another way. Your ways are not oh, my ways. Oh, I can't. You can't what? I, I, I can't be good. That's your excuse. That's your excuse is that you can't be good. It's not an excuse, I can't. Oh, my child, in the beginning, I said it was good. I made you good. Be good. Yeah, but you and I both. What? Nothing. No, what is it? Nothing, okay? You wouldn't understand. 
I, God of all the universe, wouldn't understand something one of my children has to say. Try me. It's just, um, I let you down so many times, God. No, my child. You were never holding me up. I hold you up with my victorious, righteous right hand. Never the other way around. In this relationship, I hold you up. Okay. Chisel away. Just, just be prepared for what you're going to find in there. Because I know who's inside there. Because I get up every morning and I look at him in the mirror. And I hate who I see. Because deep inside there, this, this, this little kid who gets up every morning and dresses like an adult. And I go out and I, and I try to do what I'm supposed to do, but I can't, okay? I can't be who everybody else expects me to be. God, I can't even be who I want to be, much less who you created me to be. And so inside is this scared, stupid little kid. But you chisel away. Just be prepared. You have listened to so many voices for far too long that were not from me. And you have totally bought into the lie, haven't you? You think you're junk, don't you? When you lay your head down at night after you've done the dance to get the hug, you think you're junk. Listen to me. I don't take time to make junk. How can I show you that my love for you stretches as far as the east to the west? That How can I show you that my love for you has no end? I know. Reach in your back pocket. What? Reach in your back pocket. Why? Are you arguing with me? Reach in your back pocket. Oh, God. Yes? I just meant, God, I'll do that right now. You're just saying my name in vain. Come on. It's, it's a name. It's a saying. It's a name above all names. It's more than a saying. It's more than a name. I want to teach you something about my name. Reach in your back pocket. Oh, my gosh. You know what that is? Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a note. I, I wrote it when I was in college. How did you get this? Hello? Oh, yeah. Go ahead, read it. I love Angie. Other side. Sorry. Dear God, did I hear you right today? Did I hear you say that you love me? Even though you and I both know I've messed up so many times. Did I hear you say you want to use me? And I feel so useless. If you'll take me and use me, then God, I give you all that I am. Take me. I love you, God. I love you too. And I love you too much just to leave you where you're at. This salvation that you hold, I don't want it to be some sentimental gush or some head knowledge. I want you to work it out in every detail of your life. And when problems come and chaos happens, don't look at it as a, as a prison, but look at it as a father disciplines his child. A father disciplines the ones he loves. I know, but it's going to be tough. Yes, but you bought into the lie thinking everything was going to be easy when you gave everything over to me. There will be trouble in this world, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. I want you to do something. I want you to look out there and I want you to say, Tommy is God's original masterpiece. Tommy is God's... No, not the way you see yourself or you try so desperately for others to see you, but maybe for the first time in your life, the way I see you, the way I created you. Tommy is God's original masterpiece. Yes, you are. And so are you. God doesn't make junk. You are an original masterpiece.